Hello everybody, happy new year for, for everyone. So I'm here again this year, 2022, ready for be streaming with you, talking about more stuff about Seabrus applied to jewelry designs. So let me know if my voice is sounds clear. The music is not too loud because I've been doing some setting adjustments and I'm not sure that everything is working fine from my side so let me know if my voice is good enough and uh, maybe the music maybe the music because on my last stream the, the people were saying that the music was too loud or too strong now there isn't any music but uh, i like to work with with music so just let me know if the, the music don't well you don't like the music or it's too loud or doesn't allow us to hear my voice or what i'm saying because i am working with a new microphone with the new headphones and um with new settings as well new years new year many different new things so okay so just let me know okay sounds clear hey greg how are you thanks for being here sounds loud and clear okay not hearing any music because I like to keep the music not too loud but I, I think it's better to be working at the same time when you are, you are watching me or at the same time I'm working try to listen a bit of music only just a little bit so let me know if now you can hear the music now because it's too subtle it's just the background music is okay so Go ahead, let me check everything twice. Looks like everything is working fine. Hola Nacho, hola Fexter. Feliz cumpleaños. Gracias, muchas gracias. Muchas gracias, fue ayer, fue ayer. Hello. Good morning. Do you hear any music? Voice is clear. Well, let me know if you now you're able to hear the music. I'm listening to music, so you must listen to the same music I am listening or I'm hearing, but maybe it's too soft. Let me see here. I am. Let me push this up a little bit, the volume, pop up the volume a little bit. Okay. Doesn't matter. Okay. The music is not an important thing. Okay, so okay many people here are coming so hope everything is good on your side you had a good uh, holidays and I wish you a happy new year for for everyone so let's see what happens this year I hope everything will be better than the than the past la música se escucha en el fondo okay perfect Perfect. Perfect, perfect. I'm gonna push this up a little bit. Maybe because I am listening on my headphones a little bit too loud. But uh, let's see, let's put it like this. Because I don't find the, the right settings for the music. Maybe sometimes when I am uh, re-watching again my streaming, I feel that the music is too loud or it's not too loud. I am still trying to find the right settings. Okay, doesn't matter. Okay, for today I have planned, I have something in mind, as usual, because you know everything of you, I think that you, most of you and you already know that the, this year, 2022, is the, the year of the tiger, based on the Chinese calendar. And it's very common to, uh, on Julie to, to take the animal and start making uh, the signs with the, with the animal of the year. This year there's a tiger, you know that I love tigers or all kind of felines or cats or big cats. And I have made some, I have been, yesterday I, have, I was doing some sketching or some ideas to, to try to make one design based on, on a tiger. I'm gonna show you them. But anyway, if you have any question not related what uh, about what, what uh, I am doing, 
don't hesitate to send your questions. I'm going to try to put to pay as more attention as I can reading your questions from reading your comments. So for today, it can be a question and answer sessions. So it's not necessary that your question is are going to be related about the stuff I am doing or about the workflow that I am doing or the kind of uh, scoping thing I am doing. Did you have any question related for any other kind of things? Of course, and all of kind of things related to zebras or sculpting things, but uh, just throw your questions. Uh, we can be more interactive, more uh, talking about more different things that I am doing. So I'm going to show you what I've been doing, what I was doing yesterday. I made uh, four different designs. But I'm gonna explain to you today uh, how I made them and the, the flow. from the four design I made yesterday, I'm gonna tell you which is my favorite one to keep going or to try to develop more in depth the design because all of them are, are just sketches or rough ideas. I'm gonna show you what's I'm gonna load the first one. Let me find it. It's here, here. Uh, I have three uh, three pendants and one bangle or bracelet. This is going to be. This is the the first one. You can see this is uh, most of them are based on the same concept. This is uh, the, the same concept. I was making many different testings about the post of the tiger or when I, this is the, an idea that I have to try to make this kind of uh, estalized uh, tiger. It's a little bit thin. It's not very aggressive. It's, it's like he is on top of the stone. I've tried to give it this kind of uh, angular or this kind of finishing that I like to try to make something different. This kind of angles like this, avoiding to make curves instead of make a one simple curve, to try to break the curves into different segments. Or that's the reason why it has this kind of, this kind of feeling. This is the first idea I had. And here comes the first question. Uh, I'm sorry about your names because sometimes it's very difficult for me to pronounce your name. Uh, Jay Murph me it's asking they I if I come set in Zebras or do I start in 2D first? I go directly into Zebras. From many years since I discovered Zebras, I start always from Zebras about everything because I because my mind I works in, in 3D so. I prefer to try to grab a sphere and start pulling or pushing the, the mess and try and try to to see what happens instead of grab a piece of paper or open a Photoshop file and start drawing. So I prefer to grab a, a 3D volume and start playing with the with the with the with the digital clay till getting something that I like. So I go directly into Zebras for sketching. That's the answer. Okay, this is the first idea, the first concept. I can open the second one. The second one. Oh, I click the wrong button. I click on import instead of load to. That's the reason why I didn't find it. So this is the concept number two. This is the concept number two. Maybe it it could, can work more like a earring. Maybe it can be a pendant as well. And this is the concept that I get. This is the same same tiger as before, but uh, using this kind of idea, like a branch. He is resting on a branch, and I I change the stone cut from oval to teardrop maybe gives more less symmetry here i prefer this one i don't know what do you think this one or or the other one 
This is the second one. What's your view on the... Uh, yeah. What's my view about the Resin Maxon takeover? Uh, I think my view is that we still need to be waiting a little bit more to know more in depth what is going to happen. But yesterday's Pixelagy release uh, a press note where you are going to find a lot of information about it. But anyway, the main question is, are we going to be able to keep doing the same thing that I am doing today? Talking about the sculpting with zebras, if the answer is yes, so I'm not going to be worried about anything because zebras is gonna follow make being my main professional tool. So anyway, let's wait. So because I really trust I have I the guys from Pixel Logic, I really trust on all of them, so I think that we're gonna still be having an amazing tool as we had. On the previous years and we are so let's see ba -ba -bum. for julie to the concert seed bros okay 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 i don't want to lose any any of your questions so let's open the third one from button again so let's click on load this is the number three option here you you, uh, you have a completely different design of the tiger. I jumped from this post to this one. You can see it's a completely different style, completely different post. And I made this because uh, trying to making some searching on, on Pinterest, I found this amazing drawing. From this is the name of the artist, Erika Worthy Lake. You can find it here on, on Pinterest under the name E Worthy Lake. This I love, I fell in love with the the lines and with the curves and with the style of the tiger, with this tiger. And I was start trying to develop an idea based on this kind of uh, a style of this idea. This idea, this is what the reason why I, I ended. I changed my mind from this kind of style of this pose to this pose. This, you, you can notice that it's a completely different thing. But I think that I'm going to follow with this line instead of the other two I shown you before. Let's put this back here again. Oh, 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 diamonds surface. Uh, immortal gaming is in here, bro. I have an idea for a diamond surface. Would you recommend building each stone, or do you know of an alpha or something I could use to create 1000 of the stones? Uh, well, maybe the answer depending on the, the kind of distribution that you're gonna need. I mean, that uh, it's gonna be a, a square distribution based on columns and rows maybe we have different tools inside of zebras that where we can place all the stones automatically not 100 automatically but mostly automatically but if you are looking for to make a distribution of a stone on an organic surface like this one where uh, the first thing to know is which are the sizes of the stones so if you're gonna handle one you're gonna have different sizes so the distribution will be different depend on the stone sizes in that case will be completely necessary to be placing all the stones one by one with inside of zebras but once you are um, familiar with the workflow it's not going to take a lot of time i'm going to show you how to make it because it's just to use in a it's like where you are using, for example, I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna make it this brush size a little bit smaller. You can see, you can start placing one, two, three, four, five, and so on very quickly. You, you have completely clear, which is going to be the right distribution it's not going to take a lot of time but i think the tricky part about the stone setting when we are talking about pape is the distribution itself because 
depending on the, the surface available, depending on the different stone sizes, you kind of start thinking that we are gonna we are gonna start putting one stone here, another one here, one side here, and one side here. And when you have almost five to fifty percent of the job done, you are noticing that it doesn't work. So you need to start again and start to find the right di distribution again for the second time. So there isn't a magic rule when you click a button or you start uh, creating a distribution and it works for the first time or mostly on the, for the first time. So it's a matter of me waste, wasting time planifying the stone distribution and, and controlling many different aspects during the process. Hey Mehmet, how are you? How are you doing? Glad that you, you are here. I hope everything is good for you and your family. What are some tools that you would like to exist in a new version of CBRS? I think I I have to say that I'm fully happy about what I'm having today. If I have to say one, because the only the only process that I don't make inside of CBRS is when I need to make things hollow. You know that uh, on jewel design it's very important to make things light and don't put a lot of weight on your designs. That's the only process that I make outside of CBRS. I use mess mixer to hollow out the pieces. Maybe it's the only thing that I can tell to the Pixelogic development team to add into the into to CBRS. But other than that, I completely cover it with all of the tools, all of the existing tools that we uh, currently have today inside of CBRS. Um, um, do you deal with uh, oh, a lot of questions? I like it. I like that you are sending questions. This is more makes the stream more interactive. So I prefer to be talking about different workflows on different questions instead of be focusing on about what I'm doing and don't pay attention about what you're saying. Is it possible to move a stone or something? Let me see what are some tools. Uh, okay. Juan Jose Salazar Morales is asking, how do you deal with the ring size? With the ring size, you have different ways. Maybe the fastest way is the, using the ring utility plugin where you can set up the ring size. It is based on US size or ISO size or in millimeters. But I prefer instead of using this uh, this plugin, you, you, you can see I already got it here. But the best thing is for the simplest things, you can grab an, a cylinder, make a polymess, and now you can find one of the default plugins that you will find in CBRS, the Scale Master, reading the existing uh, the measurements of the cylinder. Clicking here now, the, the cylinder is two by two by two millimeters. If you are looking for to create, for example, a nineteen point five millimeter size, you change. One of them, when this button active means when you are uh, changing one of the axes, uh, you will block, you all, you are blocking the other two corresponding to the new one. So if I change only one, the other two change in the, uh, in immediately according to the new, with the new value. So now clicking here, resizes tool. And now we are starting working with uh, uh, 19.5 uh cylinder this is uh, we can call this as a like a mandrel this is going to be a mandrel for example if i grab for example that's a pen a ring 3d of course now the ring 3d is tiny compared with the with the cylinder if i turn on my transparency you can see the ring is inside let's make it bigger till here and when from this point you should have the cylinder at the bottom of the list here turn this on and clicking on the light boolean you actually you you can see that you are making a ring size of uh 19.5 millimeter what we can do now for example let's grab this one let's turn on the symmetry where is my symmetry here this is going to be the top of the ring this is going to be the bottom i'm going to turn on another axis now you can see that I am using X and Y axis 
And now what we can do is we can start changing the shape of the ring. And from this point, that's the reason why connecting with the questions you made before, let's turn on my back face. That's the reason why I start blocking my forms or I start sketching things directly in ZBrush. For example, you can see how fast you can start creating a ring shape because when you are designing, it's hard to have 100% clear what you are looking for. So I mean that during the designing process, you are making all of a lot of the changes. You are making improvements. You change your mind from one thing that you have at the beginning. You take a decision and you, you decide to go in a completely different direction. That is the designing process. And this is the, one of the reasons why I love ZBrush because it's very fast to design and to uh, find uh, good ideas. For example, I, you can grab, for example, the clip, clip curve and you can start cutting here. You can start creating your, this kind of thing. So from this point, you're gonna start follow and creating uh, new shapes and new forms and so on. But here when the cylinder, I am making a 19.5 millimeter size internal finger size. Uh, but, uh, but it is possible to move a stone on a surface. Yes, of course it is. For example, if I grab again, let's grab again this. This is one brush. You can find it here. This is this brush is made by Bran Hazard, is a friend of mine. You can find it here. This is a stone composed by different hem, hem cuts. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you the. You go to that king, king stone brush. Let me see if I find it. Uh, here it is. Okay, it's coming. Mm -hmm. This is the brush that I currently using for mostly for all of my when I need to work with this with uh, with hem cuts, you can need to go. You should go to Bad King website, and here you will find it. It's completely. It's a free uh, asset, so you can download it for free. And it's very useful for when you are designing things with the stone. So let's grab this again. So let's grab uh, round. This is a diamond cut, for example. I'm gonna put here. I'm gonna make it bigger. Another necessary plugin that you need is this one. I am Draw Size. This is an external plugin, so you you should go to the Pixology Resources. You need to go to the Pixology website, and if you go to Support Resources to the plugins. plugins and this it must be here somewhere scale master link utility oh, no it's not this one uh, this one i am andro size and you are working with the stones and you are have a mind to be working with the stone with the inside of zbrush creating your design with Z, with the stone you should have this plugin this plugin controls to draw the size of the insert mesh brushes you are using. Now I am using this kind of insert mesh brush. If I have, I need to practice start start setting one millimeter stones on the ring. If I, you click here, one or one millimeter, then you click here. And now when you start dragging, you just start creating your stroke on the surface. At any point before releasing your pen, you need to press the control key and ZBrush will block the size to the one millimeter uh, size you set before. So now you're gonna start putting the stones in place one by one, one by one, like this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put uh, here. If I decide, let's see, 
1.5 now let's change from 1 to 1.5 now we are we are creating we are setting 1.5 stones and you and Barney's was asking if it is possible to move a stone on a surface what we can do now is what I did I grabbed this uh, brush the move the move topological brush is very important that you select the move topological brush not the default move brush you should make it bigger like this and now you can start making fine adjustments to the surface because it's not completely necessary to put the stone 100% correctly correctly for the first time so you can start now change the position on the start making fine-tuning adjustments till getting the a good distribution or for example you can use this method or the, another method that you can do is you can go apply one polygroup to each uh, to each stone go into polygroup where is it uh, auto groups so and you can see that each stone has a different color what you can do now using the gizmo i'm going to turn this off with the control about masking control click on this stone and now you can change here or even you can change the rotation you can put it here or if you don't like it you can remove it if you want you want to move this one or you can control tape control and tap on the stone you can start control tap the rest you are seeing that the the others will be masked so you will be you will be ready to move only one this one or this one or this one or this one this is the the process that i use move them by hand with the move topology goal or move them by masking based on polygroups and uh, more uh da, 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 da. But here, i love all of them but i say with the third one yeah and dexter i'm i'm agree with you and i'm gonna i'm gonna i have to still show you the fourth one it's going to be a bracelet because i'm gonna keep doing the bracelet i think immortal game is uh, what's the name of that site with your friend yeah then the, the name is it's very easy to remember you're gonna see it this bad king bad king you go here bad king and here you have a lot of resources for c brush and one of them is the the stones the hem uh, hem cut the stones let's say for example okay hems hems and no product okay so but uh, i know stones or stone stones maybe no, this is a stone. Okay, I was I was making a searching directly in Google about uh, Bad King Stones Press. And you will find it directly here. There are simple cuts, but uh, mostly the diamond cut will be the most useful for you. To, to start making your OBS inside of Seabrass. Uh, Bad King, yeah. Bad King, hem brush. Bad King is awesome, yeah. It has a lot of stuff, very, very useful in many cases. Very high quality stuff. Typing jam, yeah. <laughs> free and download them all yeah some some of the resources that you will find inside of a bad king set are, are not for free you need to pay for them but even paying that is going to be very cheap okay so let me take 
twice if there are more questions or comments. Uh, Mehmet, yeah, Mehmet, did you use Create Shell for Hollow? No, I don't use uh, Create Shell for Hollow models uh, for many years. Depending on, for example, if I am creating a, a statue or a figure, you can be still be using Create Shell uh, for makes model hollow. But I prefer to use the mess mixer because you you have more accurate. Uh, way to when you, we are talking about jewelry designs because you need you can tell to max mixer i am looking for a 0.8 offset wall thickness and uh, it's very precise of the internal cells that max mixer creates it's much more accurate than the c brush is making but anyway what you can do now is go into the uh, i don't know if you already know it you go to this plugin, Dynamics Utility. This is another external plugin that you should find it uh, as before uh, going to the resources part of the Pixelogic website. Here you can control the thickness in millimeters as well, not the default. You, you go here, Geometry, Dynamics. Here you have the, the, the traditional Create Cell button here. But the thickness is not uh, connected with uh, real units. I'm talking about millimeters, right? So if you go to the plugin, to this plugin, you can tell to see, bros, you are looking for one millimeter thickness dynamic shell instead of being playing with the right setting. Here, you can go to this new plugin and you can take here one millimeter thickness and zebras will give you a one millimeter offset between the external wall and internal wall but i still prefer to be working with a mess mixture for hollow to make things hollow and uh, the, 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 the typing for a uh, this guy who manipulate i don't know I'm not sure about what you are saying, Panda, Panda Bola. These guys who manipulate iron and stuff forgot the name. They searched you to do this model. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I am still don't understanding you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Guys who manipulate iron and stuff forgot the name. Man guys who manipulate iron and stuff i don't know what you are saying i'm sorry we are welcome Mehmet. so okay let's go to the let's come back to the tigers let's come back to the tiger okay let's come back this is the third one this is a uh, but it looked very similar that I a design that I already have. That's the reason why I try to make something different instead of being making always the same thing. Blacksmith. Yeah, it could be. Men who make jewelry look for you to make 3D models for them. Uh, I know the men who make you a little look for you. Just I'm are you talking about one of my clients or I know I know I'm sorry. I think that you have problems to write English. I'm having problems to understand the English as well. <laughs> or maybe I'm sorry. I apologize if I know I am not understanding to you. Oh, and you're talking about the foundry guys the people in charge of the foundry when they melt uh, the metal I don't know. yeah really uh and then they took a for medical and stuff on the man they said yeah you can the yeah, foundries yes They'll look for you to do what Yeah, m many people are looking for me inside of the jewelry industry. Most of them are jewelry workshops or brands or private commissions. There are many, 
many sources. It's not only one. If you are you are worried about where to find clients or where to to send your work. I don't know. The uh, 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 maybe it's, uh, you are using custom material. No, I am using the material I'm using. It's uh, I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna give you again the link. You are interested on use the same material I'm using is C uh, bro. Mat. Okay, let me here. You need to uh, tape this zebra mud cap and you will find it maybe here and here we will i think it's one of this comes from this pack i think so he has awesome materials the eye material is it's very good for rendering eyes and I think the material I'm currently using comes from this pack I think so it should be it's a mine is uh, zebra clay set 7 yeah it's this one zebra one of this one this one this is the material I'm currently using this one comes from this guy this is a guy from korea i think so and they are for free easy to remember is zebra easy to remember right okay let me put the music a little bit down like this Okay, it's better. Uh, mm, mm, mm. They look for you to model for the lion. No, the lion is it's not a lion. It's a tiger. It's not hollow yet. I'm gonna. I'm talking about what I'm gonna start doing today and the next weekend. The next the next week, I'm gonna follow with this design. Not with this design because I prefer. I like the whole the tiger looks like. With this kind of a style, remember with this artist, I was using this concept. I was using this, this concept, this idea, because I like this kind of uh, a style. But I prefer to go to a more complex thing or, oh, well, it's not necessary to be more complex or different. This is going to be the, the, the final design or the design that I'm going to keep, uh, I'm going to use it as the uh, definitive. I'm going to use, I'm going to create a bangle like this. So I'm going to start from this point. I should be talking with a jeweler to start talking about the hinge because my experience about hinges and this kind of stuff and even more when we are talking about this kind of things, this kind of stuff about bangles. Uh, it should be more or less something like to put a hinge here where you can open or close the, the hinge let's see or, but um, I not be I'm not very worried about this at this point because I'm gonna uh, what I have in mind is just to show you the the creative the creation uh, process of the the tiger of course one of the parts of the process is going to be make the the whole thing completely hollow inside to save weight and also create an internal gallery for the for the bangle something i don't know something like this you can see that it works more like uh with uh tiger stripes or something that it covers the interior of the of the bangle with the kind of design for example tiger stripes or the kind of uh, net like this i don't know i'm not sure about it because we are, i'm gonna try i'm gonna be developing the design during today 
and next week and maybe the week after the next week so to try to get a completely finished piece after three streamings or during three streamings from today next week and the, the wednesday before the next wednesday so i'm gonna be here of course because uh, as, as you already know, I'm not a jeweler. The background about jewelry that I have comes from my clients because I'm mostly, I'm more a sculptor. And even I don't like to call myself a designer, but I prefer to call myself more of a digital sculptor. So I have the skills to sculpt things inside of Seabrush. But uh, if I some questions about uh, jewelry, some technical aspects about jewelry, I have some contacts or some clients or some friends and I prefer to ask to them, to real experts or the real professionals to know how to do the things before do things wrong. So at this point, I try to learn as much as, as more as I can from the from the business professionals. So I know that most of you are already duly professionals. That's another reason why I like to be here streaming because I'm going to ask to you a question about how to do the things when I when I come to one part of the design that I don't know how to solve it like to how to place the hinge or how to make the hinge or which is going to be the best hinge for this process okay so I'm gonna try to be to learn from you as well and uh, let me read the questions uh, look at you one for this fellow must be very cool to have a 3d gem made in real life yeah must be really good to have a 3d gem yeah it will be cool yeah i'm agree so when you when you play the stone the hamstone will there be a space created to insert them or do you plan to make their own uh, that's a good question. So the question from, comes from YouTube. It's 88 scrolls. Yeah, maybe we can say this is the main question about when we are talking about the stone settings. Is uh, you know when you're when we are talking with uh, with a 3D tool. In this case, we are making dual design with ZBrush, and but doesn't matter if you are using another software. So as far as I know, in the jewelry industry. Some of the clients wants to have completely uh, empty spaces or blank spaces with the flat surface because the stone setter is going to uh, make the stone setting with the real thing, with the real, with the real metal. It's going to set the stones on the surface. One of the clients wants to do that. In my opinion, it's more professional. It's much better. The results are, are better. But other clients wants to have Mm, as more job done as possible. I mean the holes, the prongs, on many other things. In that case, if I receive a commission like this, I need to do it. So you can do it inside of Seabrush. But uh, again, I prefer to leave things like it is now. Because for example, if I this is going to be completely covered with the stones, I prefer to leave it as it is. And the stone setter is going to planify the distribution. I'm going to make the stone setting by hand. This is the real. I think my opinion is just my opinion, my taste. This is going to be the real, the best way of do that, do this. But anyway, if the client is requesting to you to give the uh, STL file or the detail file completely uh, done with holes, prongs, and also only ready for be pushing the stone of each uh, space, you can do this. I think that you are referring to this. So when you play the hamstone, will there be a space created to insert them or do your clients make their own? Okay, we have different things. I'm gonna... For that, I, I have this custom brush made by myself. This is, uh, this is how it looks like. This is what we call... This is a stone seat. Or this is uh, what you are referring to the space created to insert the stone. This is... I'm gonna play with this this is a graphic that you will find it here inside of brush if you go to depth you will find it here this this graphic this graphic says this is the whole depth you are putting this piece you can see you here you have a black line if you are putting here you can see now is more and you can see now the difference 
and you put it here and we're gonna, gonna gonna pay but let's say here and we have uh, for example let's create 1.5 millimeters stone let's come back again to imm zero size and it looks like the bangle is not on the real size okay that's a man because if i go here because this is only an as this is only a sketch it is still don't have uh final measurements so if i go to the this this is going to be the mandro the internal uh the space for the wrist and i go to the scale master it is one 11.26 millimeters this is not a real measurement if i am looking for a real thing the first step to take is to start changing the the space for the wrist if i take this i'm gonna and uh, let's say we can be talking about uh, depending on a wrist for a woman or for a man maybe we can say 55 and to be realistic millimeter 55 for 60 60 if I go here to 60 if I have this button active all oh, that means that it, I, I'm gonna change this sub tool but we are gonna change all of the other the other sub tool according to the new uh, measurements so let's click on here let's make things bigger now now it is 16 millimeters now i am working from now with real final measurements so if i go to my imm draw size grabbing again this brush one millimeter if i now click and press the control key as i did before now this is 1.5 millimeter so this is what i did one here split mass points and I'm gonna start follow creating put in the distribution maybe 1.5 they are going to be too small depending with the available stone sizes if the client also only have 1.5 millimeter you should use 1.5 but let's see let's go to two we start here putting push this out a little bit more and we start creating the distribution for all of the stones like this and put it here for example and this is the the space that you are talking about before about the space created to insert them this is the i'm gonna put this underneath and this is going to be the the necessary space for the stone of course after the stone setter needs to drill a little hole inside to put the push the stone inside of the metal and another extra x step to take is to start creating the prongs another brush that i have this this is a, another custom brush i'm gonna turn this off I'm gonna create the prongs of uh, 0.8 millimeter and for now I'm gonna start creating let's play with this again so from this point we're gonna start adding the prongs most of the time I do this only for rendering purposes when I am creating a design and I like to show, I like to render the design as more realistic as possible. That's the reason why I need to create the spaces for the stones, the little prongs or the grains. Because, But most of the time this is not going to be the final uh, uh, ready for printing file. Because as I said before, uh, the stone setters prefers to make it uh, by themselves by hand instead of having most of the job made on the on the on the printed file uh, on the casted file i don't know if i find explaining to me and i if i explain myself well 
but uh, I think you know what I'm saying. Then you can play back in the hinge for your dragon pendant. And uh, not yet. I'm still working on it on the dragon pendant. But for example, the hinge for the tail, it's quite simple. But the hinge for this kind of thing is going to be more complex. I should be. I should ask to a uh, to a jeweler to know how to do it. So I was curious if you had to make the individual stone sitting like this, like you are doing now. Yes, <clears throat> if you are working with real different sizes, you should be uh, modifying the seats according to the stone size. So just start. Depending on the distribution, you should be start creating with a 2, 2.5, 1, 1.5, depending on the stone sizes you have. And you need to be setting uh, one by one the different uh, sizes. And then, uh, okay, this, oh, thank you very much. You're welcome. I clapped at you that I'm giving to you uh, useful information. Do you play with focal length or what? DBM art of uh, from YouTube. Uh, do you play with focal le length or or with the new focal length of uh, new feature of the two in 2022 zebras? Okay. But in my at this moment, what I have in mind, uh, I don't. I'm not going to cover it. The idea that I have in mind is not completely cover the design with the stones. Maybe the stripes. For example, if I'm gonna open the the reference I used. I'm gonna import this image. You can see it. Let's rotate it. Let's put it here. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Like this. You can see the stripes because now it's too early to start thinking about how to create the stripes because I need to work more about the anatomy, about, about the proportions to start thinking about the stripes. But what I have in mind is, if, for example, if, if I start making a stripes like this, maybe you can cover the interior of the stripes with black stones like this in black. Playing with the colors, methyl, yellow gold, and black stones for the stripes, like this. What I, what I should be uh, thinking more about how to make the stripes, but but I like this kind of uh, this kind of finishing when I have a lot of angles, corners, and, uh, and sharp edges instead of. Uh, doing them more organic or more relaxed form or more curves. So what I have in mind is to try to start creating this kind of this thing with uh, with the stripe with this kind of angles and irregular forms for the stripes. What I should be it's still too early to to have this decision completely take one hundred percent. You say you are a designer, but does it feel... Yeah, I don't like to call myself a designer. Of course, what I'm doing is designing things, of course. So, oh, you are a designer. But I think designer is a very big word. I don't know. It's, but uh, this is a... When you are creating products, and here we are, I am, I am creating a... Bangle, a jewelry piece. You are creating a product, and it should be wearable. It should be not, not too heavy. Or heavy enough, and should be uh, easy to wear. Uh, should be beautiful. It should has value. Uh, this is the kind of a lot of uh, factors that you can take. You should take when you are designing the piece. But I still don't like to call myself as a, a designer anyway. So I'm gonna talk to you about who I did this. You can see now it is composed by different uh, different pieces, different chunks of uh, 
of of, uh, of primitive forms. What I do normally, what I do is, is start also, always with. Uh, you say you're a designer, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, what I do is, you can see that the topology now is completely random, very weird. You can see you are noticing now that I am using, well, during the sketching this step, I am using a lot the Sculptis Pro feature. You can see here you have a mix of different topologies. You can see I started from this, from, from Anisphere for the head. And the, for example, the arm has different different shapes. What I do is I always work with the IMM primitive brush. Uh, one of the the primitives that I use the most is the capsule. You, for example, you insert a capsule. Let's split it. I'm gonna try to create a a new arm just to explain to you what I what I do when I am. Uh, designing or sketching forms. Let's turn this off. What I do, I create one, control and drag. You can see that you can start copying and start creating things like this. And this is what this is what I do. I'm gonna turn this on the left boolean to get to don't have the cylinder visible. And from this point, what I do is just start with the move brush, just start creating, change the shapes. And you turn, now is the moment to start using the Sculptus Pro. And with the Sculptus Pro, you know what you are doing and you are creating new topology when you are smoothing. You are using the smooth brush, you are creating new topology like this. And from this point, you're going to start refining shapes or start creating more complex forms like this. But I am still having two different elements. You can use the move brush and you can move them both together at the same time. But if you are using the move topology, you are going to be able to move one or the other individually. So you can start. And when you are when you're having two different elements, as I, we did before with the stones, you can use the auto groups. And now control tap and I start creating changing sizes. It's like creating your base mesh like a puzzle with different, with different uh, element. Instead of try to be uh, creating, in this case, the arm or the body from a one single form. So it's better to split the, the anatomy into as many uh, parts as possible because you're going to have more freedom to control the different elements and start creating uh, more complex forms with a uh, easier way. For example, for the claw, for the hand, I'm going to use a cylinder. Insert cylinder. What I do is I insert the cylinder here. I use the gizmo to stretch it like this make it longer to make it like this and here you can have you still have you start having something that start looking like a, like a paw or like a like a paw of the of the animal so now you're gonna start creating your sculptures mess like this and now it's time to start playing with the with the shapes like this and like this and I start mixing things and this is all an arms it starts to make this thing a little bit more narrow this part thicker part if you don't want to move everything together remember move topology again and now you can start moving things individually and you're gonna start let's create this part should be a little bit thicker about the, the shoulder what you can do is using the back face mask you're going to start adding thickness here and you're going to start you're going to start creating different forms like this 
Okay, let me see if I I have lost some of your questions. Let's go, where will we go? Okay, so let's follow. Another thing that I do now, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put the arm here to being able to see the both arms together. This is the bottom one, it's going to be the reference. This is another thing that I recommend to you is to start making planes when you have when you're having something like this. Uh, looks like um, uh, tubes or very soft uh, shapes. I I like to start breaking this kind of uh, regular forms or two regular forms with uh, this brush. And I start creating the the corners or the edges like this. And I start creating planes. You can see here, now we have a new plane here. This is one plane and this is another plane. And before it was more like a one continuous around the surface. And I like to start breaking the surface into different planes like this. Like this here, this is going to be here or here, or for example, you can, you can root another thing here. And when you have the planes, using the H polish brush, with this brush, I don't like to use the Sculptist Pro. I prefer to use this inactive and I start creating more planes, even more planes like this. For example, for the knuckles, you can start creating one extra plane here. And this is the process that I use during the the sketching part. You can see using primitives, Sculptist Pro, and from this point, it's enough. From this point, of course, after we should be refining the, the topology with Dynamis or with C Remesser, but at this point, while well, we are still playing with the main forms, it's, in my opinion, it's much better to use uh, Sculptist Pro. Okay, let's come back to the original. I'm gonna turn this on to keep this visible as a reference. I'm gonna keep this visible here on my second monitor better. Keep this visible. Let me put the chat here to being able to see your questions. Okay. Let's work a, a bit more on the head. Now you can see everything now, it's as a one piece. I'm gonna split the head. But if I already have different polygroups, select so rectangle control shift, I'm gonna split this, split hidden. And uh, I'm gonna send it to the center of the Z axis. This is going to be in the center. I'm gonna make it symmetrical because now you can see the, the nose is almost broken. So I'm gonna use this feature, mirror and well, like this. Let's push it here a little bit to the right and turn no, a little bit to the left, better like this. Now it's completely symmetrical. Now I can turn on my symmetry on the C axis and can, I can start working with uh, symmetry. Let's start, start refining forms. But this, I'm gonna start. This, this is the, one of the things that I love, I like about this brush is like you are working with uh, with a sanding tool with a sandpaper or with a file when you are you can see 
let's relax the mat here when it's when you are sandpaper or pile you need to fix this the topology and you can see here you can turn on the sculptors pro and now you can add more dense topology here because here we are going to start adding some details or more than details i'm going to start adding more uh, uh, cleaner shapes so i'm going to start cleaning the forms this is going to be the second part of the process when you have lazy mouse is too long when you already have the main forms but now it's time to start refining things like this let's grab the clay build up i like to turn this to don't use any alpha because this is a it's like a real clay sculpting when you need to apply material or when you need to remove material when i when you need to remove material i start sending like like i'm i'm using now with uh with the sanding tool with the sandpaper and when you need when you need to add material you can use for example the clay build up and add more material let, let me see where do i need to add more material for example i'm gonna remove a little bit here with the clay with the sculptors pro of course this mm, i not i don't like it very much the the mouth the mouth looks strange i'm gonna change it a little bit let's grab this you can see the, you don't have to be worried about the perfection when you are sculpting so be focused about the the forms don't be worried about how clean it looks like because now it's not time to be to start creating clean things or clean shapes so i, I only need i'm only worried about how the different forms works together so here this is going to be the mouth the mouth is going to be there same concept as before now i'm creating corners like this maybe yeah, i'm gonna create this kind of thing here corner and a plane Um, maybe you can in, in, in more like this here put this part more together like this, like here. and with this style I'm looking for not the, with a very realistic finishing I mean that it's not completely necessary to create to recreate uh, the lips exactly or the mouth with a lot of detail i'm looking for more with uh, clean shapes and forms instead of being here adding a lot of detail tiger okay the mouth works better Not too aggressive because when we are creating when we are creating jewelry maybe we have the mind depending on if we are creating jewelry for women or for men make aggressive things is not a good idea as far as i know for my from my clients so try to stay in the middle depending on the kind of jewelry you are doing of course but uh, you are looking for more unisex or 
Usually it will be better to don't make things too aggressive. The nose has this interesting form here, something like this. It's not completely straight. Um, you so you are not uh, what's that one brush color that you use to get the sharpness? Yeah, I'm gonna. I used to talk about this pack of brushes on all of my streamings. You can see uh, they are called SK. I'm using one, two, three, four. Uh, one, two, three, and four, five. Five brushes from the same pack. SK brushes. The pack contains more than five brushes. If I get into the my brushes, here we have in the front S. You can see you have more than five. There are many. It comes from a guy, it's a Japanese guy, this is Sakaki Karu. I'm gonna give you his uh, art station where you are gonna be able to download uh, his brushes. So this is a, it's Sakaki. I don't know if my Japanese pronunciation is good enough. Kaoru. Or something like Kaoru or something like this. SK brushes and uh, there you go inside of the art station here we have the pack this is uh, Kaoru Sakaki it's also on a streamer from Pixelogic you um, he makes a lot of manga stuff and you go to his store you have two packs the SK pack volume one and this is the newest this is the newest this one i think so and it has an amazing pack of brushes and you can download them here and they are for free and the brushes that I use the most from his pack is the SKS Last. If it works something like a damn standard brush, if you go to B, D, B, and D from Dame Standard, you can use this. Works something similar. You can see how this works. But I prefer how this brush works because you can see it's softer. It's just a matter of personal preferences but i'm used to use this pack of brushes that's the reason why i always use them but uh, by default you have some of the brushes that i for example if i grab the a standard brush if i select the alpha 39 i turn on the accu curve maybe i'm gonna get something similar with less steps similar to the to the brush i was using before you can do it by yourself a standard brush, Alpha 39. You should uh, turn this on the Accu Curve option. You will find it here. Um, where is it? Is uh, instead of uh, Curve? Yeah, Accu Curve. You can. You should turn this on. And the lazy mouse to zero. So yeah, not to zero. It's a better idea to set it up to 0 0.1 instead of zero. So you will get quite similar brush like this when you're going to be able to start creating the corners of the plane so the first step to create the corner the second step you just create the plane with the eight polys i don't like to turn to keep this active the sculptures so now you can start creating things like this i'm going to use this let's see how the eye works as i said before i'm looking for the schematic forms instead of being here creating a realistic anatomy but uh, at the same time i'm trying to 
find interesting shapes or interesting forms because when we are creating jewelry you are we are uh working with the reflections of, as well of the surface so you have good forms you are gonna get interesting reflections on the surface and the product is going to look like uh, clean and interesting instead of dirty and with a lot of unnecessary forms it's like a kind of uh, same concept when you are creating when you are you are constant team uh, car design for example let's play with this curve here As you can see I'm looking for kind of aerodynamic shapes or maybe article a style with the clean shapes like this Okay. Um, I'm saying well. Hello, welcome. All through the what material I am using. I was seeing sewing it before. You can find it. You go to Google and you go and type in zebra matcap. And here it is. You will find his uh, Gumroad uh, a store, and it comes from from this pack. See, brass custom matcap, ten different matcaps, very cool matcaps, all of them. Also, what is the brass with all of the stones in your in my UI? Yes, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you it again. You go to Google again. And you go to this one, Bat King Stones Press. Bat King, easy to remember. So you can go here. Bat King is a website, website for zebra resources. And it is here somewhere. And here. And it's for free. Very useful. And very old comes from the 2015 it's a seven year old huh? okay so what time is it okay we are still having more than 30 minutes so okay I'm gonna keep going keep working on this refine the shapes of the Another thing that I like to use to, to work with the sculptures, because if you I turn this on, if I use the clay build up without uh, an alpha, I can start uh, melting or welding the surfaces like this, you can see here. I'm still working with different elements. If I use the move topological, you can see I can play around also only with the with the ears, but if I'm looking for a more continuous surface between one sub one part one piece and another this technique is very useful when you are using the sculptist pro is the clay build up without uh, without uh, an alpha and I'm going to add here I'm gonna start playing with the shape of the ear not too pointy and not too with soft forms. Let's create here the cavity. And uh, once we are I'm happy with the main results. Mm -hmm. Next step that I take, I go directly to Dynamis, but not at the moment because I'm gonna be, I'm gonna try to be to make these things more rounded. But the next step for me is to jump from the Sculptus Pro to to Dynamis, and next step 
sometimes will be from Dynamas to Siri Master, but not of, not uh, all of the times, depending on the kind of design I'm doing. I'm gonna shape this. Yeah, <laughs> good question. How much would it cost to make that sculpture into jewelry? Depending on the kind of metal, of course, in gold it's gonna be quite expensive, even if we make it hollow with a very thin wall thickness but it's gonna cause i think i'm gonna answer that at the end of, of the process once we get it ready or ready for printing or ready for production file cbrus can tell you the weight and can give you an estimate price of the cost of the metal of course, only only about the metal, not only the cost of the of the three D printing and the manual work necessary, of course. But you can take a rough idea about which is going to be the the end cost of the of the design. Nowadays, most of the brands are creating things instead of solid, uh, of course, instead of solid gold. Uh, gold plated when you are creating the piece into a cheaper material like silver and you put that um, gold plated that gives the the final color this should not be too far away from this surface because maybe it's going to be too pointy Let's break, keep this at this level, because if not, when we are wearing the the bangles, it can damage another people. Like this, okay. Let's. I like how it's turning the the head. Now it's time to keep here working. I'm gonna. To start adding the eyes. I'm gonna put two little balls here. Hello. <laughs> Look strange now. Like this. Let's split them into a different sub tool. And let's see. What another brush that I like to use is the instead of SK slash the SK cloth. But I like to change the alpha. To the alpha 39 and let's see if we start creating the eyelids like this okay Sometimes the eyes works better without the eyeball inside. Sometimes. You can see now, now we are start creating more small forms. Yes, let's push them back a little bit. Let's make it, maybe we can leave a space to set to the smaller stones on the eyes, depending on... I'm gonna make it not rounded, a little bit oval, like this. So we don't need to be very worried about tiny details now at the moment. So just to see how it works. And it works nice. Because the, the time for detailing will come after. 
Now everything should work together as a whole thing, not... But as I said before, I don't want to create a very detailed piece, so just to be playing with the... with simple forms. I don't like this part of the hair, the head. Like this one. Let's... Hola Jorge, bienvenido, welcome. <laughs> my casualty, yeah. By accident, you you found it by accident, yeah. Yes, you need to be paying more attention about my streamings, man. So <laughs> you will be here. I will more than welcome. Thank you. So let's say. I like how it works from the side, but I not really like it very much from the front. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Maybe this part of the head should be not so... Yeah, it's always it's time to learn new things, you know. Uh huh. Let's see. I'm not really convinced about the front view of the head, but let's see what it's wrong with it maybe like this okay worked better and when you are designing things it's not it's not good to be stuck on on one part because you can be here all day long to start trying to find what is not working or how to improve how to improve it but it's much better to leave it to start with something new or then start working on another part of the model and come back to it after one day or and then you will find the solution easily okay so i'm gonna leave it as it is let's make it more like this let's see how it works from the top I still don't like it, nothing. Let's see if the eyes, if I make it, make them flat. Yeah, much better. Much, much better. Much better, yeah. Maybe I have here a lot of volume here on the neck. Maybe we should be trying to put. Okay, let's start working on this part. This it is not symmetrical. I'm gonna, and you can see if uh, once I start refining the shapes, I start splitting things into different sub tools. If I decide now go to the neck. So this part of the design, let's uh, isolate it and split it, split it, and now I can as work uh, as an individual piece. The first thing that I need is more more geometry. So using the Sculptus Pro, I'm gonna start smoothing the surface. to start getting more dense mesh here. I'm glad to know that 88 is crossed because this is the what I try to make on my streaming. So don't just don't be here as copying as I normally do during the, the day. 
but I try to share with you my way of working, uh, why I do the things, and, and of course, being open to all of your questions. As I said before, it's not completely necessary to being here asking about what I am doing. So if you have any other question about any other technique or question that you have with ZBrush, so you can we can talk about it without any any problem you can see now I am not using symmetry because the model is already posed this is one decision that we should take during the sculpting process because it uh, will take more time to complete when you need to make things double one side and then the other side but depending on the kind of design sometimes it's much better to to work without symmetry and sometimes not of course depending on the time the available time that you have you know that all of the clients are given to you very tight turnaround times you sh everything should be ready for yesterday or before so you can make things faster it's uh, a good option but uh, here we are more for learning and for enjoying the process it's not going to be necessary to make things completely too fast so you can see now I'm, I'm still working follow working with the H polish I try to find the right volumes or like this this is one brush that i use a lot the h polish brush to start finding uh, uh the the planes on the the volumes of from the from the model but you can do also i'm gonna create here for example a, a mask here I'm gonna create this kind of this is how I create this kind of uh, hard surface finishing just with uh, the Sculptus Pro and the uh, H Poly Express. Maybe it's the facial expression. Yeah, the facial expression. Now I like it more than before, but I'm still not 100% happy. But maybe we make it more sad or like this. I like how it works from the side, but from the front, I think we still need to work a little bit. Maybe the 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 nose is too too big. I know. I should be playing a little bit more with the with this. Let's see. Well, let's stay like it is on the moment. At the moment. And uh, here, okay. I like how the neck works. Let's try to create here one more interesting thing. So I like to create always to add uh, S. I don't know how to say in English. It's S's in, in plural. The letter S. Always to try to add as more S's as possible. I'm gonna explain you what I'm saying is in, instead of having one straight line I prefer to start to making this kind of feeling here so it goes from here look goes from here and instead of being working always with a straight the straight lines and uh, this shoulder is more relaxed so it should be lower than this one 
this. Another good trip, another good, good tip that I can give you. Well, this is not a real tip, but then this is an um, one thing that I use very often is using the move brush with the AccuCare active. You can remember that you can find this setting here inside of the curb settings. You can turn on and turn off the AccuCare option to start creating corners. It's going to be very useful. I'm going to show you here. This is what you can do without the Accu curve. You can start making this kind of curve surface. But if you turn this on, you can start creating corners and I start breaking one curve into different segments like I am doing now, for example, like this to create, create a straight line here. It's going to look interesting. Another straight corner, corner. This corner here. Maybe a corner here and a corner here. Now we can. Let's call this proactive. Okay, you can see how it works. You start creating different segments. Now it's time to come back again to the H polish. And now you can start. Creating things like this, and you can start. Okay. We can do now is to create an extra corner here with the sculptor proactive course. This now we can. Uh, thank you for sharing your knowledge. My nephew is getting married and asked if I would sculpt their wedding rings. Yeah. <laughs> you stupidly say yes. Why? Yeah, okay, you can try it. Maybe the problem is not a sculpting. I think that's my opinion. The problem about jewelry, it's not uh, designing as I'm doing now or a sculpting. Maybe the problem comes when you need to. Uh, make it reality so so once you have the file has the right measurements has the right way way where do i send it for manufacturing so in that case having duly friends or contacts will help a lot but uh, if not there are websites where you can find where you can send the the file for manufacturing, but the problem comes with uh, when you need to make it things. When you need to bring things into the real world from the screen. That's the most tricky part about, about jewelry, I think so. It's a very complex world when many people are involved on the manufacturing process and many different techniques and many different uh, aspects that can fail. But of course, of course, you are creating a not very complex ring, so it's going to be easy, I think so. Yep. The thing with you, my, I'm trained, I, this looks all very, very good, but when you say there's something, there's something missing. Yeah. Yeah, train the eye. Yeah. 
you just be training the eye all the time and trying to develop in your your style or your your way to see the things that's the thing that you never see the things finish it so this is an that's an artist issue but uh, when you're creating when you're creating art or when you're making your creation you are never are happy with what you are doing so you can see it here and more or less you are happy what you, about what you are doing but did you see it tomorrow you are going to start feeling to start from scratch again because you don't like anything or just try to improve things so uh, the 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 finish never never, never happens when we are talking about art and things so so I'm gonna split the body. A split, the split, the split the hidden. I'm gonna try to don't speak too much about complex things in English because I know that I'm not good enough to find the right words in English because sometimes my mind goes try to explain things in 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 in, in English, but it starts thinking about it in Spanish and I never find the right words and I get lost uh, okay here I have a problem that's not a real problem but the problem that I have we have here is that we have a big piece of geometry and we need for example here we have a mix of different topologies here here we have a more dense mass. Here have a lower dense, uh, lower dense mass. And instead of being here polishing and polishing till getting everything regular as a regular mass, maybe a faster way will be go to theory measure and create a new mass like this. Because we can see if we are losing a bit of detail, so undo it. Click on double. Es un, no es un anillo, es una, un brazalete, una pulsera. Uh, now better. I'm gonna start polishing. And now I'm going to start refining the shapes I already have. The first thing that I'm going to do is to start trying to don't have this so non-regular surface. I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to use the, my smooth picks brush. I'm going to start smoothing things here. Of course, at any point, it's going to be necessary to weld to make the bullion between the body and the, the arm on the the ring of the bracelet, but not at this time. So I'm going to follow cleaning the shapes. I'm going to use now the pinch brush to start pinching things like this. Use this brush with caution because it's a bit aggressive brush with uh, with the topology. You can see you are stretching the the topology. But the good thing about C brush is the, it allows us to be focused about the sculpting process. Because at any time we can change the topology with many, with different ways. We can make it, we can transform it with a Dynamis or creating a new topology with a Siri measure. Gonna, oops, I forgot to turn on my symmetry. This is one problem that you can have. You can see I was to start uh, adding refining details on this side, but nothing happened on the other side because I forgot to 
turn my turn on my symmetry but no worries we can go to mirror and well with the c-axis you can see tweak no this is going to be the other side we should flip it go into mirror with the c-axis let's send the details to the other side and now mirror and well and now i have the details at both sides with the same quality so now let's turn this on and we can follow from this point let's make this point a little bit not so wide because like this so during the sculpting process as we were talking before we are designing at the same time because we are considering we are taking into account the weight or how heavy it's going to be the final piece so that's the reason why i try to make this part of the body to try to keep the the main volume here in the top top center of the bangle Of course, this is going to be completely full. Oh, well, or, or not full, but the body is going to have the stripes, tiger stripes. Oh, maybe the hips will be here. And this is going to be the tail. Uh, here we are sometimes that the forms happens by accident you can see here when you start moving things your eye recognize that uh, some interesting things are happening for example this kind of shape i have here i like it there's another one we can go here we can fill this gap sometimes you just discover the forms by accident it's not necessary to have everything ready on your mind okay going to be enough for the body I think the way the body meet the the ring don't work very well doesn't work very well like this just because i'm gonna try to put a mask here hmm. no i'm gonna try i'm trying to add a mat topological mask here but doesn't work Maybe it's about the new gizmo features. Let's see. The mask. BT transpose, transpose clothes, transpose a smart mask. Let's try this. I don't like. No, difficult to, to control. Let's come back to the 
default transpose. Okay, there you go. So go mask. I'm gonna create a new polygroup here. Go. Go. Control W. Now we have another polygroup. And we can get this kind of anything instead of okay but I, I think I should take this kind of decisions after this maybe it should be more inside because it's going to be flat on the internal like this. Okay, and we can make it thicker here. I'm gonna use this and move infinity bro with the back face active to add more thickness. To so don't make it this part too thin, because if not, it's going to be very easy to break or to to bend okay so i think it's going to work let's put where's my symmetry my symmetry is here let's make it a little bit thicker will he have back pass no no the, uh, the idea of the design is without the back paw because when you are wearing the the bangle or the bracelet on your hand is it's not going to be a full body realistic uh, tiger design it's going to be more something the design is more focused about the on the head and on the upper body no rear legs or rear paw okay for the arms it's going to be in it's only going to be necessary to sculpt one, and once we have one ready, it's going to be duplicated, mirror to the other side, and match the post of the sketch. So let's go here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to split this from the other, split hidden. This is going to be the master. Okay, and I'm going to make uh, as a one single piece because now it is composed by one, two, three different elements using the gizmo. You can get into the gizmo and clicking here, remiss by union, you will create a union of all of the. You can see now the the seams here. Now the three parts are welded together. And now I'm gonna create a new mess with the double amount of polygons, keeping the groups because the groups are going to be useful for posing because we have the forearms, the back arms, and the, and the pole. Here we messer. Getting out of the computer how was the problem? I have experience with larger sculptures, but I told them they should keep. Yeah, getting it out of the computer is always a problem. Um, but do you mean that the problem is not working with the co with the computer or working with the computer? I don't know what do you mean, Leonard. Brass Springer, yeah, the rhythm. I, I, Thank you. I, I think the rhythm is very important when we are creating a designing or when you are creating on a sculpture like this one. To know that the the form flows well together, all together as a one single uh, piece. So now here we have the arm and let's try to start uh, refining shapes of the arm. Let's for example yeah, I like the elbow. 
has this kind of thing here. And for example, what we can do is play one fold here. Another thing here. Another fold here. Yeah, the concept, now the concept comes from this. I was talking about the concept before. I found this drawing on Pinterest by Erika Worthy Lake. I think that you can find it here on uh, Instagram. And I found this drawing and it's where the idea comes to, to my mind to try to use this kind of uh, design. You can see now that the, the, the design is not the same because I have changed because now I am are playing things from my from my, my head not if, not using exact trying to copy exactly the same but I use the the thing that I like the most is the post and this part of the this part of the head this this what well, this is the thing that I like the most this kind of this kind of thing the rhythm with the head, the neck, and the and the body, and you can see now the the paws, the position of the paws are more or less the same. But this is the this is where I grab the, the idea from this drawing. So let's follow working on that. And uh, for example, the arm. This should be more something like this. This this is a uh, the shoulder can go here. Something like this. Yeah, it works. And uh, this is going to be the arm. The paw is not going to be very detailed, so I mean I'm not going to add the claws, the nails, the, or you know who to call it in English, that part of the, the hand. I know that the nails is it's right for the human nails, but when you're talking about animals, I think there must be another word more specific. But um, at this time, with this brush, I tried to find the rhythm with uh, with the <laughs> again things that happened by accident. I am see here a curve that I like it. Let's see how it works. Yeah, it works. When you start moving things, sometimes things happen by accident and you start watching forms and, and shapes that you can use. I don't like very much this part. Maybe we can work more here let's refine this let's find it here another another fall here and the last one should be there okay yeah, I like it, this, this shape. Mm. 
later. Let's see what happens in the internal face of the of the arm at the moment. Let's push up a little bit this. I need more material here. And this uses stitches. I'm using um, my my processor is an i7, 10th generation. And my GPU is a 2060 RTX. R, it is what well set is RTX. Uh, 2060. I'm, I'm saying, I don't know if I'm saying well, it's uh, it's RTX graphic card with an i7 10th generation and 32 gigabytes of RAM. Leonard, why? You will send you out for you, for you, yeah? No, you're, yeah, you have Bender to do million and foundry work. That, that will help. Yeah, finding the right people to create the jewelry pieces, yeah, it's always challenging. Can of course, depending on the kind of design that you have in mind to make, you know, as more complex you make it, will be uh, harder to to manufacture. Or the finishing, the people that you should find uh, should be uh, more and more professionals in, in terms of uh, to to achieve the kind of finishing that you have in mind. This is something that really most of the time happens, happens to me when I send design for manufacturing. Uh, it's it's hard to to match what you have in mind when you have the real piece on your hand because most of the time when you have in mind it's not possible to to replicate the, the kind of finishing that you have in mind or of or it's possible did you already seen it on internet or you already seen on a store what you are looking for but uh, maybe the process that needs to be it's necessary to to achieve that kind of finishing First thing, it's going to be expensive. The second thing, it's going to be hard to find the right people to, to, or the right person to achieve this kind of finish that you are looking for. Okay, it's time to wrap up. So this is what I get. On the next Wednesday, I'm gonna be here, follow working on this bangle till the end. I'm gonna try to keep this completely finished. Of course, as I said before, if I, I already have in mind to follow working on this, but uh, you wants to learn complete the different thing, you can be there on the next Wednesday, making your questions and asking to me whatever you want as you did today and we can be talking about the stone setting or another kind of uh, workflow supplied to jewelry design with uh, ZBrush. So I hope that you like it, this today's stream, and I will wait you the next Wednesday, same, same hour from 6 to 8, my local time. And I hope that you find it useful, interesting and if you like it uh, you can like the video and you can subscribe to the pixeloid channel so more things will come during the week today tomorrow you know the zebra's life never zebra's life uh, never stops a lot of interesting uh, stuff here and thank you very much for being here watching my 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 streaming my today's streaming and i hope uh to keep your attention of my on my work on my for my future streamings and uh, 
and I really appreciate that you are here on my live because I love to be here to make the streaming mainly for talking with the people and discussing about jewelry things and jewelry techniques on, on zebras workflow. I like to share my, my I love to share my knowledge and with more with more people. So okay, so I will see you here next uh, next Wednesday. You can you can go to the Pixel Logic. You go to the you know I think that you already know it. I'm gonna show you. Anyway, if you go to the Pixel Logic, to the Silver's Life section. Here, come on. And you go to the calendar. You can scroll down here. You can have all the streamers during the week. And if we load more, maybe. Okay. My next stream is already scheduled. So you can get into the, my next streaming and you can set up your reminder here. And Pixelogic will send you a reminder, I think, one hour before the hour of the streaming. And if you are interested in visiting my website, you can go to my. You can find me on my official website, is naturalisco.com or to my Instagram. My name in Instagram is Escultura Digital 15. It means Digital Sculptor 15. Here you will find my, my works as well. And you can contact me through here or you can go to my art station you can send me a message if you need anything or you need to to know something about my work or you have a commission or a question about your C brush whatever you need and again thank you very much for being here watching and uh, we'll see you next Wednesday the day 19th with the dancing tiger bangle next wednesday okay so okay see you there and take care and thank you